There is a passage in the Talmud about a grubby fellow who had a propensity to insult people he did not like by calling them slave. It was 2,000 years ago, but still a weird kind of insult in that time, place, and community. When one of the leading rabbis of the region was told about it, he said, in less colloquial words than these, check into the guy's lineage. Dollars to donuts, he himself descends from slaves. And sure enough, it was so, the grub sought to invalidate other people by projecting onto them his own impediment. As the shameful election drama has unfolded in Florida, where one Brenda Snipes has been producing more ballots out of thin air than pen. You know what? He and they didn't, never happened, rather, it all is a hoax and fallacy stemming from people who themselves are election cheaters and thieves, Putin colluders and outright crooks, projecting their own moral infirmities onto others, if we do it, then probably everyone else does too, well, no, you crooks. Everyone else does not steal elections. Point one. Invalidating other people by projecting onto them one's own impediments and moral infirmities. The accusation of Trump collusion with Putin and the Russians to win an election is a hoax under projection. Al Franken, during a brief moment when his hands were free, intimidated newly nominated Attorney General Jeff Sessions to recuse from duty and leave Rod Rosenstein in charge of a Mueller investigation that so far has netted an ostrich leather jacket and all other kinds of stuff but no Trump collusion with Putin. But now, that is beyond crystal clear. In watching the Florida travesty unfold, the Talmudic passage about the nature of flawed people to project their dark sides onto others is manifest, grubs seek to invalidate others by projecting onto others their own impediments and moral shortcomings, imbued with a greater propensity than others to cheat brazenly and shamelessly during and after major elections, Democrats and their left media stooges project onto others their own evil, if we cheat and steal elections that the Republicans should have won, it stands to reason that the GOP must have cheated and stolen the 2016 president presidential election that Hillary should have won, too. Democrats have a long and sordid history of cheating and stealing major elections, endangering faith in our democracy. The Democrats probably stole Richard Nixon's 1960 presidential election by finding just enough votes in Richard Daley's Chicago and in Lyndon Johnson's Texas, fabricating them as fast as they could all night long until they had just enough to elect John Kennedy. Although that Kennedy brother was the last Democrat in the White House who ultimately stood up effectively to communists and other American foes, and followed capitalist principles encouraging a robust economy, he did not deserve to be elected, because he lost. The Democrats cheated in boss Richard Daley's Chicago and in landslide Lyndon's Texas, and they stole it from Nixon. Interesting how karma plays out, in the end, I, Kennedy never serves a full term, E, Johnson goes down in ignominy, driven out by early primaries within his own party, E, Johnson's tenure marks the beginning of the end of Democrat dominance in Texas, I, V, Nixon becomes president anyway, and, V, Nixon gets elected because Richard Daley's autocracy in Chicago results in mass chaos at the 1968 Democrat convention. With such karma, how can people remain atheists? The Democrats also stole the U.S. Senate seat held by Republican Norm Coleman in Minnesota in 2008, giving it to Al Franken. Franken won by 312 votes though Coleman came out of the election with a 725-vote win. A series of recounts over the next six months, including votes cast by some 400 or more prohibited convicted felons, swung the election to the guy with the filthy mind and busy hands. In the best of respectable rhino fashion, Coleman was too dignified to contest the outcome further. Interesting how karma plays out, in the end, Franken gets booted out of the Senate anyway, by his own party, the same cheaters who put him in, for doing only a fraction of what the party's most revered leader at the same time, Bill Clinton, did many times over and so much more criminally. How can people remain atheists? The Democrats likewise stole Republican Ted Stevens's U.S. Senate seat in Alaska in 2008. Fabricated corruption charges were brought against him in bad faith. When Stevens was convicted only one week before the 2008 elections, Alaskan voters became unglued in their igloos, lost their once straight bearings, and they voted him out.
Soon after the election, it emerged that the entire prosecution had been corrupt, and the judge threw out all the charges. In the words of Judge Emmett Sullivan, in nearly 25 years on the bench, I've never seen anything approaching the mishandling and misconduct that I've seen in this case. But Stevens's seat had been lost to Democrat Mark Begich. Six prosecutors later were investigated. The lead prosecutor was exposed and left the government. Another committed suicide before the investigation was complete. In the end, Begich got voted out after one term and just recently lost a comeback bid to become Alaska governor. For the past century, Democrats have been at the center of electoral cheating and thievery. Not all Democrats, obviously, one cannot fairly generalize that broadly. But virtually every stolen major election since the turn of the last century lies at the feet of Democrats. In 1956 they stole the Rhode Island governorship when incumbent Democrat Gov. Dennis Roberts manipulated votes after Republican challenger Chris Del Sesto beat him, Rogue Island. In 2004, the Democrats cheated to give the governorship of Washington state to Christine Gregoire over Republican Dina Rossi. Through it all, the Democrats have been emboldened by Republicans' weak and timid responses after being cheated by election grand theft. Nixon absorbed it, so did Coleman. Rossi, too. They just let themselves get held up, gave up their wallets, and let the crooks wipe their shirts, too. Thus the difference between a rhino that slumps and a rhino that stomps. Point three. When they can't stuff ballots after an election, Democrats instead cheat by trying to change the rules as the game ends. Nor are Democrat election cheaters limited by stuffing ballot boxes. They cheat alternatively with secondary devices. If too many eyes are on them, preventing them from, miraculously, producing 20,000 or 30,000 new votes each day in Broward County, and again, how is it that Snipes still is not in prison, or at least barred from election oversight, then the Democrats come up with other tricks that are the hallmarks of cheaters, let's change the rules after the game already started, uh, ban the electoral college, let's send the electoral college, we used to like it. We loved that it assures each of our presidential candidates a huge head start, with mega-rich electoral votes in deep blue New York, California, and Illinois. We loved that it forced all presidential candidates to come to forgotten regions and appeal to forgotten constituencies where one discrete demographic can swing a key state. We loved it, until it worked for George W. Bush against Al Gore, inventor of the Internet and the prophet who correctly predicted in 2006 that Earth would reach the point of no return by 2016. And then it worked for Donald Trump and his basket full of deplorables against her, so now let's ban the Electoral College B. The scourge of anti-Senatism then there is the new Democrat scourge of anti-Senatism, next, let's end the United States Senate. No fair that North Dakota gets as many votes as New York, that Mississippi gets as many votes as California, by the way, Blue Delaware gets as many votes in the U.S. Senate as does, say, Texas, indeed, as the sage Joy Behar, born Josephine Akiuto, said last week during her few hours daily when she is permitted to change out of her straitjacket for outdoor exercise on the set of The View before they come back after her with a butterfly net, the Republicans did so well in the Senate races because they gerrymandered those statewide elections. Think about that. Sounds like talking points from Ocasio-Cortez, so let's do away with the United States Senate, C. Stack S-C-O-T-U-S, next, now that the conservatives have their first solid majority in more than half a century, let's stack the U.S. Supreme Court, D. Extend voting rights to felons and other illegals, next, let's give the vote to felons. And let's bring in millions of aliens illegally. Let's send down leftist lawyers to coach them in Mexico to articulate to U.S. Border officials the only English words they can speak, buenos dias, senor. Por favor de jame entrar a este pays. 2K golpe a muchos policías mexicanos para legar hasta aquí. I am here seeking asylum because I have a well-founded fear of persecution on account of race, religion, nationality, membership in a particular social group, or political opinion. 8 U.S.C. Section 1101, A42, A.K. Tangus and Buendia. 
Have a nice day, Marcuno para escuchar este mensaje en inglés. The Democrats, having been unable to win, fair and square, having lost the loyalties of all the classic components of the historic Democrat coalition, the middle class, urban trade union workers, ethnic Catholic blue-collar workers, farmers, immigrants from Europe, married Caucasian women, simply have worked to import new voters. And let's grant all 10 million or 20 million amnesty, hence the right to vote. No more razor-thin elections, necessitating midnight ballot stuffing and recounts, just Democrat landslides from now on, for Democrats projecting an era of their own election, cheating onto those who beat them in 2016 fair and square buoyed by nearly a century of cheating, as now blatantly evident in Florida, and possibly in Arizona. The Democrats looked at the 2016 presidential election results and contemplated all the cheating they had done during that very race. The Clintons had colluded with the Russians to win the election. Donna Brazil and other high-ranking Democrat villains cheated during the election by furtively leveraging access within CNN to pass along to Hillary Clinton secret questions that debate moderators plan to ask. Other Democrat election cheaters set up a special massive group of superdelegates who would vote for Hillary against Bernie Sanders or any other presidential candidate, no matter what the rank-and-file popular vote and Democrat primaries and caucuses demanded. Indeed, the multi-hour caucuses themselves, which give an advantage to the candidate whose voters are most enthusiastic, were a dishonest scheme to bypass standard primary voting in order to give an unfair advantage to Hillary because it was assumed that activists would be energized by a first-ever women president. The Clintons did not anticipate that even more thrilling prospects, a first-ever black president, and thereafter a socialist redistributionist, would generate even greater excitement to carry the caucuses. In another scheme, the Democrats set up their 2016 presidential primary debates for weekends and other low viewership times in order to reduce the audience when Hillary's opponents would get their best chance to make inroads. Thus, they even cheated their own base until the rank-and-file banished disgraced unresigned party head Wasserman Schultz from the convention. So many, measure-for-measure, measure, moments in politics, how can people remain atheists? Ultimately, Democrats assume that others cheat just as they do. Doesn't everyone cheat in elections? Come on, we can't be the only ones that game the system and cheat six, seven, nine ways to Sunday. So Trump must have cheated, too, just like us, and now we are at Chad Redix, another attempted election holdup in Florida. Magic ballots appearing out of thin air, being counted or authorized by as few as one confirmed liar by cover of darkness in the Sunshine State. Didn't we assume that Brenda Snipes had been thrown into prison by now, or at least barred from getting near ballots? The same Brenda Snipes, the same games, at the center of another Democrat vote scandal. Only two differences this time. 1. Rick Scott, the latest Republican victim of Democrat cheating aimed at stealing an election, seems finally to be a Republican who will fight back. Not a Norm Coleman, Dina Rossi, or Richard Nixon girly man. It's time a fight to the finish, finally point two. The other difference, the guy in the White House. The buck stops there, as does the moose, the elk, and the antelope. Because we finally have a bull to stampede them. It appears further that now he has an attorney general to pursue the work of the Justice Department to defend Rick Scott's victorious election for the Florida Senate seat.